We are starting up a new clinical study here in Grand Rapids. It is a clinical study where we are ultimately focusing on reducing suicides. And uh, this study gives hope to many patients that are suffering from suicidal thoughts and ideation and I'm very, I'm very proud and I'm glad that we're finally getting to start up this study here. And it is a clinical collaboration with Pine West Christian Mental Health Services. They are going to enroll patients at their campus, 160 patients, and we will follow them over a whole year to study symptoms and biological markers in these patients. And my lab here at Van Andel Institute will be responsible for the biological analysis and <clears throat> we're also working together with Columbia University in New York to understand the biology of suicide. And so the background of this study is that um, the rates of suicide is increasing every year in this country and in most other parts of the world too. Sadly, in this country, the suicide rates exceeded 40,000 people last year. And this is in spite of uh, many efforts that are going on to increase the awareness among physicians and also the public. And we believe that the reason why we still have not been able to cope the suicide rates is that there is a lack of the fundamental biological understanding of what is actually going on in the suicidal brain. And this is what we hope to obtain in this clinical study that we're starting up. So the reason I think this study is important at this time is imagine yourself in the shoes of a family member or a person who's struggling with depression. And perhaps they've had the worst day of their life and they're really feeling on edge, they're not feeling well, and they finally get up the courage to come in and ask for help. They're seen by a doctor or a nurse or a social worker or a therapist who's trying to help them and assist them with the right level of care and the care that they need. Um, I think it would be fantastic if, like in other areas of medicine, we had a blood test that could help us guide their treatment, assess their risk, and give them the right level of care at the right time. That's where this study, I think, can be so powerful. Um, we're trying to assess blood markers of inflammation that may track with depression and suicidality over time. We're going to be measuring those markers longitudinally over the course of a year, and our hope is that this will really assist doctors and nurses and other healthcare professionals in determining risk uh, for depression and suicide. Here at Columbia University and the New York State Psychiatric Institute, we're very excited about this collaborative study funded by the National Institutes of Mental Health. Um, here and at the Van Andel um, Institute. In this study, we're going to try and learn something about the things that trigger suicidal behavior in patients. The suicide rate in the United States has gone up 33% since the year 2000, and we need better ways of figuring out when people are at high risk and how we can reduce that risk quickly. Stress can produce an inflammatory response in the body and even in the brain. Um, it's not just an infection, it's just the um, stress of, of psychiatric illness and the stress of everyday life. And by looking and monitoring this level of stress in individuals through looking at their um, inflammatory uh, response state, we hope to be able to predict when patients enter a high-risk state which will help us intervene and prevent suicidal behavior.